We're going to try this again. Tried once, booted off. We're trying it a second time. This time I'm going out with my phone as opposed to my tablet. So we'll see how everything goes. As I was saying before, um, I used to do a live video stream on a Facebook group called, excuse me as I plug my phone in, Bushcraft Survival, Primitive Kills, Mickey Wilson. Look at the roof, look at the roof, look at the roof as I plug this in. Bushcraft Survival, Primitive Kills, Mickey Wilson. But since I was kicked off of Facebook, guess what's not going to happen anymore? Well, I can't get on there, so I can't do those lives anymore. So here I am. going to be doing lives right here every single Friday night. So we can get on in here and have some fun. Um, I expect some glitches. I expect some issues because this is the first time I've used this platform, and I know absolutely nothing about it. So hopefully it's as easy to use as the Facebook Live was. So... Let me see if anybody's talking to me. Um, there we go. See if that works. Anywho. So, um, anyways, guys, welcome. Uh, first thing I always like to do whenever I have a live feed is I talk about housekeeping. What am I going to be doing? How am I going to be doing it? Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, as we know, COVID-19 has turned 2020 into one big old poop sandwich. What's going on, Aunt Valerie? Um, so, hey, what's going on, Susan? Um, so anyways, it's turned into a big poop sandwich, and most other things I would be going to are closed. Um, the events have been either restricted or completely wiped out. Um, Pathfinder, Woods Runner, um, the Georgia Bushcraft in the spring, all those were completely wiped out. So there's still a few that are going on. Number one, we've got in September is Prepper Camp 2020. Now they have, hey Gary, they have been uh, restricted. Um, they have downsized quite a bit, so I will not be going to that one. But, um, you know, if you guys have a chance, you can go to that one. And uh, the next one for me that I'm going to be going to is far as gatherings go is Georgia Bushcraft and that is November 6th that weekend uh, it's the first weekend in November so I'll be heading out there and of course you'll be able to find all the good stuff that Bombers Bush Bushcraft has on their website and you know hang out and learn a bunch of stuff from a bunch of people and um, you know I think we need that I think we need to can the social distancing get closer and um, you know be people again. So that's just me. Anyways, I'm going to talk a little bit about hatchets, axes, and all the fun, sharp stuff because I get people who contact me on um, my site all the time and they're like, hey, you know, um, what, what would you suggest? This axe or that axe? Or um, they want to know what axe I use on my videos and stuff like that. And the axe that I use on my video is a Husqvarna. It's, uh, I believe it's a boy's axe. It's uh, like 19 and a half inches long. I got it several years ago, uh, $51. It was delivered right to my door. Um, I bought it off some obscure tool website, and I searched and searched and searched and searched and searched, and I finally found it, and I was like, bam, that's the one I got. And um, so if you guys ever take a look and you see me using my axe and it's super duper shiny, that's my husband. That's my baby. I love it. So, but I haven't been able to get Husqvarna's on Bombproof Bushcraft website. So, um, that's Bear. He's the Wonder Dog. How you doing, Bear? But, yeah. So, I uh, haven't been able to get Husqvarna on my website, but I have a couple of other awesome, awesome axes. Um, I get Frandies, which are Italian made, and I get Marbles, and... They're very nice axes as well. These ones are made in El Salvador. So, um, but I mean, you see one axe, you kind of see them all because that's what they're there for. <laughs> um, I give them hugs and kisses every single night, probably. But um, the the 
axes all have different uses depending on the size and the shape of their uh, the shape of the grind, just kind of like a knife. Um, you know, knives, you have one knife doesn't mean that it's going to be useful for everything all the way across the board, and we'll have shows on that as well. Um, so, and if people want to chime in about, you know, what their favorite axes or knives are, by all means, throw some comments in here. Let's get this, uh, let's get some chat started. But, um, so the axes that typically are European, um, they are sandy ground or uh, flat ground. They come to a point, they're just tapered right on in. And a lot of that is because they have different trees than we have here in the United States. In the United States, we typically tend to have a convex ground ax head. We have hard wood here, whereas typically the Europeans have softer wood. And when you're using an ax, and you, and you have that sandy grind or that flat grind and it gets in for felling, bam, it gets stuck. And then you have to wiggle it and jiggle it and pull it out. Well, after wiggling and jiggling for a very, very long time, guess what happens? You get a loose ax head. So somehow or another, our ancestors who, you know, they weren't smart or anything like that, they figured out, well, let's just change the shape of the head. And I say that in jest because <laughs> I, I, hold, I hold the... the frontiersmen in the highest regards, they didn't need to have college education. They were, they were friggin' geniuses, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I, I'll get into that on another show, too. But anyways, um, they changed the shape of the axe head, and because of that, whenever you were felling an axe or anything like that, it didn't get wedged in. The shape of having that convex grind to it made it a lot easier to unstick uh, your axe. It actually kind of wanted to pop out all on its own. So um, when you're choosing an axe, that's one thing that you really want to take notice of is where are you in the world? What purpose are you going to use it for? Are you going to use it for chopping down hardwoods, softwoods? Are you going to use it for bucking things up? Are you going to be, you know, hauling it all over God's creation, um, you know, because that has to do with the weight uh, of your of your axe head? Um, are you, uh, do you want a felling axe or something like that? Oh, that's not good. Somebody just told me my audio, my audio is not good, and I'm not sure how to turn it up. Is anybody else having issues, really? That could be my phone. Hang with me. Well, my microphone is not muted. And I know I'm talking loud because I'm a loud talker. Is that any better? Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Any better? Nothing? Not really. Let me ask you this. Does everybody have their audio turned all the way up on their computers? Because <laughs> I can't get it any louder. Still soft. Well, I'll have to work on that in a, in a next video, audio issues, and that's not good. So, sorry for getting uh, sidetracked there, folks, as I try to set things back up. Anyways, um, I don't have a game on my Thing. I just, I'm going to hold my hand over here and hopefully my, uh, my voice goes sh ricochets off my hand and into the microphone. So a lot of things that you have to consider when you're buying an axe or using an axe is what woods am I using it on? Am I traveling anywhere? Because that has to do with the weight of, ish, of things. Um, how long do I want it? Am I going to want a felling axe? Am I going to want a hatchet? Am I going to be doing small carving projects with it? There's uh, a lot of things to consider. So 
whenever I'm talking to people, that's that's you know the biggest things that I have to to know in order to recommend you know what kind of axe. Another thing that you want to look at is your steel, um, and most of the axes nowadays are made out of a high carbon steel, and as most of you will probably know high carbon steel holds an edge a heck of a lot better than let's say um hey megan how you doing and tell your dad hi then <laughs> um high carbon steel what it will do is it's, it's easier to maintain in the field it holds a nice edge um you can also use it for other things like you know if you had to create sparks or something like that but all in all High carbon steel is, um, it's, it's just a really good steel, like 440 stainless steel. You don't want something like that. Um, it's, it's not gonna hold the edge quite as well. Uh, there's always pros and cons. It's also a softer steel. So you want, um, hey, Pamela, how you doing? So you want a, a higher quality steel. Um, what's going on, Benjamin? And what's going on, Mara? Man, I got people pulling in from all over the place. Welcome to everybody. So you got, um, you want to make sure that your steel is good. Obviously, it's, it's just like buying a knife. If, hey, Robert, if you want, um, if you want something that doesn't take a whole lot of maintenance, then get, you know, a 440 stainless. But it's not going to be nearly as good as having a higher carbon steel. Hey, what's going on, Blue? So, moving right along, uh, the next thing that you want to take a look at is obviously the size. Oklahoma, in for some live video. What's going on, Casey? Um, now, a lot of the a lot of the handles that you're going to see are going to have right there. I know it's backwards, but you'll see right there, USA Hickory. That's pretty much a good standard for your axe handles. Your axe handles are always going to be made out of a nice hard wood, be it ash, hickory, oak, something like that. Um, but most people, uh, most, most makers of long-handled tools are going to use hickory. And America makes some gosh darn good hickory. I don't know if you guys know that or not, but... Pay attention to the handles. And some of the things that you want to look at on your handle, besides what wood it's made from, is the shape of it. Um, and some of it's just aesthetics, like, hey, that looks like a nice axe. That's pretty sweet. That's a nice, you know, sexy looking axe right there. But looks don't always mean it's going to do a good job. And I'm going to see if I can set the phone up here so I can show you. So you get this nice curve in here. This can actually be an ergonomic, easy, easier um, to use tool because of the shape of the axe handle. It will actually force the axe into the wood depending on how the handle is shaped. Also, like if you're doing a lot of uh, small carving stuff, you're going to choke up and you're going to get up here underneath uh, the beard of the axe and it's going to give you a lot more control. Um, so if you're going to be doing something like that, you want to make sure that it fits your hand well. And finally, one of the one of the um, last things to take a look at on the handle is the grain. Okay, so you want to make sure it doesn't have runouts in it. Um, when you can, is a bearded axe better? Just uh, okay. Well, there's a reason for a beard on an axe. So. Give me a second and I'll get to that. And if I forget, remind me. But um, you want to make sure that the grain of the axe doesn't have run out because that's a weak spot in the wood. Um, and, uh, you know, just having a nice, even grain as you're looking down at it, if you see, you know, how the grain runs. And especially down here, you can see how the grain is. Um, if it looks bad, it probably is. So a lot of times it looks pretty, but I don't. I don't like them, but a lot of times you'll have right down through here, uh, there will be where the heartwood and um, the living wood was, and you'll see a line. I and I'm back. Okay. 
So you want to take a look at the ring. You want to look at how it's wedged. And that will also tell you, uh, the, you know, if, it, if it's made with some quality or not. So the difference between like an axe and a tomahawk, an axe gets fitted in, slid down this way, and a tomahawk actually gets slid up from the handle, and it's a friction fit. With an axe, you actually, right here, is how it's fit. There's no glue. There's nothing like that holding it together. It is all 100% friction. The wood pressing against the outside of the eye, that's why it's really important to make sure that uh, up here is, uh, is uh, you know, really well secured. And just as a side note, that's where the saying, don't go flying off your handle, or don't go flying off the handle comes from, um, you know, because people used to use ax heads and there goes your ax head flying off the handle. So, um, <laughs> you know, I was thinking about doing uh, a, a, a whole video series on old sayings and where they came from and, and how they're still used today. But there was a question about the beard on an ax. And if anybody doesn't know what the beard is, right here is the beard. Um, it's right down through here. And some have a more pronounced beard, others don't. And if I'm using like a carving ax, I like a beard um, because it actually kind of puts your hand up and behind the blade, gives you a lot more control. That's my opinion. Um, for felling axes and stuff like that, it's not so much a, a useful, it's not so much a useful thing uh, to have a beard on a felling axe. I mean, you can have them and stuff like that. Uh, during the ancient days when uh, axles were used as battle, not only as a, as a tool for building and repairing things, uh, the beard on an axe should also be used to pull uh, a combatant towards you uh, or hook things. And even now, you can use it to hook limbs, pull limbs down with the extreme beards on um, some axes. But pretty much, the like, if you get up here and you have a lot more control over the sharp end of the blade, um, as opposed to, you know, being down here, it just puts your hand a lot closer to the to the center uh, of, of where you're working. So, if you ever use um, and, and a regular axe where it didn't have a beard on it compared to one that did, you'll notice the, the, the differences immediately. It's a huge difference. So, um, let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything else major about the axes. So, um, Mara, I'm working on the volume. I don't know why the volume is low. Um, I can't, I, I don't know if it has to do with my phone or what. Hey, Brent. So um, again, that's all, I'm, I've, I've got a lot of issues to work out. This is my very first live from YouTube. I used to do Facebook ones and I did them from my tablet. I never had issues with my tablet, but my tablet is having issues connecting this week. So um, that's why I'm on my phone and trying to make it work. So, um, I'll try my tablet again next week and see if it works any better. If not, I'll have to figure out a fix for the phone because I'm, I'm talking in a pretty loud voice right now. <laughs> um, and if it's still quiet, I, I don't know what to do because I'm pretty much shouting. So, but um, that's pretty much it, guys. So as far as like the axes, like what I would use an ax for, Hey, Dee Dee, what's going on? Um, so, you know, pretty much what I use, uh, the Lizzie board milks every opportunity to attack before consuming. <laughs> um, if I'm carving and I'm going to be hogging off some, some material, that's what I'm going to use an axe for. If I'm going to buck up big trees, that's what I'm going to use an axe for or a hatchet. Um, if I'm doing fine carving, I can even use an axe for some fine carving. But as with everything, there's a tool, there's a time for every tool and a tool has every time. So I wouldn't say that the axe is your one tool solution, but it can be, you know, pretty darn useful. So 
But uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, this was going to be like a pretty much a test run for me using the new YouTube. Well, not not new, but new for me, uh, YouTube. So um, I wanted to hop on here, do a quick run through, see how things go. You, you will be able to see me every single week. What determines the difference between an axe and a hatchet? Hey, Chris, what's going on? Um, what is the difference between an axe and a hatchet? I am not absolutely positive. I've heard different answers on this. I've never Googled it, and I've never gotten one straight answer. But from what I understand, it has to do with the weight of the head. Um, there's a certain point where it's no longer a hatchet. It's more of an axe. Now, um, it has... Um, <laughs> yes, Aunt Valerie, uh, go buy an axe or, or two. Um, however, I much prefer for home defense, a gun is much better. That's just my personal opinion. <laughs> um, I don't know if it has to do with, I'm kicked off again. There we go, we back. I don't know if it has to do with um, being an ax if it's two hands and a hatchet's one hand, but um, I believe it has something to do with the size of the head. So what's going on, Eddie? You joined just as I'm getting ready to head on out of here. So anyways, guys, um, if you have any more questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, any questions, go ahead, throw them down in the comments. I know I have some audio issues I have to work through. I'm going to try to work through those and see if I can get my audio levels back up correctly. I also know I'm having connectivity issues. We're going to see how that works out. So everybody, it is, uh, it's about 8.30, you know? We all work five days a week to get two days off. Don't spend. Okay, here we go. So I'm also having connectivity issues. Um, but anyways, don't spend it in front of the TV. There's nothing in there, guys. There's, the TV's not going to do anything for you. Get outside. Cook some food over a fire. Enjoy your family and the great outdoors. And uh, go out there and explore Mother Nature a little bit. And until next time, guys, get out of the inside and into the outside. Take care, y'all. Have a good one.